Hey, you guys! Welcome to the first video in a series of lectures from Best Medicine. The series is going to be on medical school histology, typically for the first year students and the second year students who are new to histology. And hopefully we'll try to cover this subject from the ground up all the way to the major concepts. And I really hope that you will stick with me with this series uh, throughout and hopefully follow our channel and our website and promote it with your friends because it's free, right? It's free. So who's excited? Who's excited to begin? I sure am. All right, so let's begin uh, with the epithelium, which is going to be the first chapter in this series. In the previous video, we discussed something about cells. We said that cells yeah, are building blocks of life and cells combine together to form different tissues. And then tissues would combine together to form organs, right? And organs would form organ systems and organ systems would form an organism, right? And uh, in histology as well, we study different organ systems under a microscope, so microscopic anatomy of different organ systems. And initial, initially, or you could say functionally, what those uh, organ systems are made up of are cells and tissues, right? So firstly, we start off with different chapters uh, consisting of basic tissues. And then from the basic tissues, we move on to uh, complete systems and the tissues that they're made above and of course we'll all be observing and studying the structures uh, on a microscopic level so first of all we have this very easy and simple chapter called the epithelium right or the epithelial tissue so when you say epithelial tissue it means it's made up of a group of cells making that tissue and those cells are the epithelial cells uh, the word epithelium actually comes from a word called epi, right? Epi, E-P-I, epi. What does it mean? Well, epi actually means on or upon. So anything that is on or upon another thing, uh, and in medical terms, you'd say that something that is on or upon some organ, right? So, uh, for example, we have the heart or the lungs and so on, or the, uh, or the gut, right all these are different organs and uh, these organs actually have a layer of tissue surrounding them so for example on the heart uh, has a layer of tissue let's say this is the heart and on top of it it has a tissue covering it right it's on or upon that heart and that tissue obviously we know uh, from anatomy that is called the called pericardium right so pericardium is an example of an epithelium that covers um, an organ that is on or upon another organ. Another example would be the lung. So let me try to see if I can draw some lungs here. Okay, that's one lung, that's another lung. And let's say that there's a layer of tissue yeah, covering the lungs. And I think you might have an idea of what these are. This is the pleura, right? Pleural membrane. And pleural membrane is another example of epithelium that covers, performs the function of covering, and it also helps prevent friction between uh, the, uh, the lungs uh, as they contract um, and expand. So these are two examples of uh, epithelium that perform the function of covering. So these would be uh, different uh, groups of cells that form an epithelium that cover uh, different organs like for example the pericardium would consist of a, a group of cells covering the heart similarly pleura would be a group of cells covering the lungs uh, covering or lining right and there's other forms of epithelium that perform other functions like for example there's absorbing epithelium we'll look at the microscopic slides and everything of that in just a bit and examples of it in just a bit but uh, an example of this actually is the absorbing epithelium like the intestinal epithelium right in the small intestines and in the large intestines we have the intestinal epithelium that performs the function of absorption of nutrients right the food we eat it is digested in our gut and then the intestines absorb it then we have secretory epithelium right it performs this function of secretion. Um, there's also some motility involved in a certain types of epithelium like the respiratory tract. In the respiratory tract, like inside the trachea and the bronchi, um, uh, basically you have what's called cilia that are uh, 
present on top of the epithelium uh, in the respiratory tract. And what those cilia do is that they are motile and they're able to basically circulate the mucus that is secreted in the respiratory tract. And we'll, we'll look at that in details in just a bit. Uh, so that's another function, let's say uh, motility. And one more function I would say is um, sensory, right? There is also sensory epithelia and so on. An example of sensory epithelia would be the epithelia of your inner ear. In your ear, you'll study that in special senses chapter. That is, I think, the last chapter in this series uh, in which we study the uh, eyes, basically vision and hearing. And in, in that one, we will cover the sensory epithelia as well. Uh, there's also sensory epithelia in your nose, which is able to detect different odors, different smells. Um, there's also sensory epithelia in your tongue right so yeah there's many different kinds of sensory epithelia we look we look at them um, as, as we go on through the series in different chapters uh, but let's come to the question about the types of cells that actually make up epithelium right we said that it's a group of cells that make up this epithelial tissue epithelium so what are those cells how do they look and uh, what are the features well uh, let me quickly draw like a line here and then on top of this line i'm going to put some cells so we have some cells i'm going to put them like this okay and so on. Uh, firstly, the first feature that you should be able to see among these cells is that they are aggregated, they are collected, they are close to each other, they're very composed, they're very collected, they're right next to each other. So we could say that these are aggregated cells. They're not freely floating in some matrix, they're aggregated, right? They're not free or detached or something like that. Uh, they're aggregated, they're collected, they are right next to each other. Secondly, as you can see, they have actually multiple faces, right? They have this face right here on the top. They have the faces on the sides. And they also have a face at the bottom, right? And this feature is actually called, having multiple faces, is called polyhedral in nature. You'd say these are poly hedral, which actually means poly would mean multiple and hedral would mean faces. So multiple faces, polyhedral. And so uh, these faces are actually given some names like the top face is called the apical face or apical domain, apical, A-P-I-C-A-L, uh, and the sides would obviously be lateral domains or lateral faces, and the bottom one is actually uh, the basal domain or the basal face. And so because of all of these faces, the cells are said to have cell polarity. So number one, aggregated. Number two, polyhedral. Number three, you'd say uh, cell polarity. And so on. And the fourth feature of epithelium, which is slightly difficult to understand, is that they have a low extracellular matrix extracellular matrix which basically means the matrix that's outside the cell the stuff that's outside the cell uh, extracellular matrix you will get more idea about in the next chapter but i'll briefly explain to you uh, extracellular matrix is the matrix that's present outside the cell whatever is present outside the cell uh, it's basically a jelly-like fluid you could say it, it is made up of something called ground substance among some protein fibers ground substance uh, which is like a, uh, a gel-like fluid or jelly-like fluid and so on. And what the epithelial tissue does, has, is that it has a low amount of extracellular matrix, it has a low amount of this uh, ground substance and some protein fibers as well, so some collagen maybe. And you will have a, we will have a detailed discussion on what the ECM is in the uh, next chapter, which is the connective tissue chapter. Uh, but for now, I want you to memorize that it has basically a low amount of extracellular matrix, and you'll know what that is in the next chapter. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we have learned in our neat notes. Um, so here's the epithelium, okay? And what we have learned so far is that epithelium or epithelial tissue consists of the aggregated polyhedral cells. It has a low extracellular matrix and it shows cell polarity. So it has this apical, lateral, and basal domains. And some of the functions that epithelial tissue performs is covering or lining, absorption, secretion, motility of fluids, sensory, uh, and so on. And we'll study all of these in detail when we get to those specific chapters uh, as well.
And that's pretty much it for the first video. Uh, I took it a little easy on you, a little slow, but uh, after this one, I think I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm going to speed up the things a little bit, and hopefully we, want, we will finish the chapter within the hour.